<laughs> Hello, my name's Ashley. And I'm Danielle. And we're the Crohn's and Colitis Dietitians. We're here to make conflicting info a little bit less confusing and more clear. And today on our What to Eat with IBD series, we're going to dive into vitamin D and give you kind of a snapshot of why it's so important, what to look for, what to do, what not to do, and who's at risk for being low. Mm -hmm. And one of the overarching reasons why we want to talk about vitamin D is because nearly 30 to 40% of people with IBD experience a vitamin D deficiency. So it's a good chunk of people that we want to make sure are being looked after nutritionally. And you kind of get this snowball effect with vitamin D where we are low and at risk for being low for many reasons, including just having active inflammation. But we also need vitamin D to help with our gut barrier and to help with inflammation control. So we want to supplement it if it is low because it's associated with other things that when it is low that we don't want to be happening. And so it is important to address it, get the right dose, and then retest to make sure that your levels are good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, vitamin D is important for many, many reasons. We're just going to cover a few in this video. But the big part about it is it's called vitamin D, but it's actually a hormone and it plays a lot of roles in the body. One of them is the fact that it can be a protective role in gut health. Um, oh my gosh, Ashley, but why? <laughs> A protect yeah, it plays a protective role in gut health specifically because of its role in the gut barrier function. So your gut barrier is supposed to be this tight junction. Um, you can kind of think about the game Red Rover when you think about this. So we want our gut barrier to be tight and secure so nothing gets through. So if you can remember back to being a kid when you used to play Red Rover where you send someone over and everyone's holding hands and if their hands are not tight, things get through. Well, the same thing is happening with your gut barrier. It's a thin lining and you don't want things to get through. You want it to be nice and secure so that things like pathogens or things that can make you sick or gut bacteria that you don't want to be present don't make their way in and cause issues. And so vitamin D plays this important role in helping your body maintain that barrier and also helping produce things that help with reduction of inflammation. So that, that's the really important role with vitamin D. And, you know, I think those of us with IBD, we're just more at risk for having a deficiency because we have inflammation, but there are other factors too that can certainly contribute to another increased risk, like including where you're located. If you're located more in the Northern hemisphere, if you don't get a lot of sun, or let's say you ha you're in a climate that requires a lot of clothing, like where not a lot of your skin is showing, even skin pigments, so darker skin pigments are more at risk for being low. And so it is important. It's an important thing to check. Even in places where you do get a lot of sun, you can still be low, even just due to having a gut condition or numerous other reasons why, you know, it could potentially get low over time. Mm-hmm. And with that being said too, I know I've had a client in the past that said to me, so they had IBD and he said to me like, oh no, I'm not supplementing anymore because I've been outside more. And before anyone stops supplementing, we would definitely recommend getting your vitamin D checked to ensure that your levels are appropriate because of what Ashley just said, even if we go out in the sun, we have to make sure it's for know a certain amount of time we have to be wearing minimal clothing so that our body can oh my gosh what can our body do it properly <laughs> yes that's the word i was looking for <laughs> <laughs> um so where i am in canada like good luck getting it from the outdoors so which is why supplementation is so important because from food alone too it is very difficult to get your required vitamin D. And generally speaking, most people can supplement with a dose of vitamin D of 2,000 to 4,000 international units a day that is generally safe. But of course, always check with your specific health provider before you go jumping into any new kind of supplement. 
Also, the healthcare provider will take into consideration what your levels are, maybe what the state of your disease is like to determine if a higher dose is needed. Because if you over supplement with IBD, that can also be problematic. Over supplementation of vitamin D has the potential to bring about nausea and vomiting. It may also bring about a little bit of weakness and it could get more calcium buildup in your blood. So please talk to your healthcare professional. Yeah, it is one of the, not all nutrients are like more risky in terms of just guessing at a dose, but vitamin D and I would say iron is too. We don't want to guess. We want to figure out the dose and align that with the proper dosing. And when you're doing that, you're also looking at the person, like what is their risk for, um, what is their risk for being low? What's their history with vitamin D? And do they have any other risk factors that we might need to consider in terms of dosing vitamin D, like, you know, kidney stones, um, certain histories of things that we want to consider and watch for throughout that process. So don't guess, (laughs) make sure you get, get a specific dose from your healthcare provider and then follow that with the test, you know, six months to a year, especially if you're more prone to wintertime low vitamin D definitely get tested again. All right. That's that. Thanks for listening. And I hope that was helpful.